Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Season 11 rules and regulations and I'm going to be going through them with you to try and give you some help on how they're going to work. Um, so Season 11 will start on the 9th of April and that will be the day when the battles first start. Now I'm going to go through this post and we'll work it all out. So they're just they're just going to go over all the rules, regulations, and the rewards. Now the rewards have changed, all of them. Um, they say they're all the same, but uh, a couple of them are returning. But no, that's that's not the case. One of the new rewards is this new um, projection detail, which, as you can see, is it, yeah. You can put this on tier eight and tier ten tanks because they're the only tanks that currently have access to this. Um, actually, to be honest, I think this might be a new type of thing. At least I've never seen that before. These are these are normal. But yeah, that's one of the things. So I, I would assume that's just a decal. Or an, uh, or an ember. Yeah, decal. Decal. Um, the general clan rules. We'll go through that very quickly later. Um, one star will be added per account. Once applied, it becomes permanent and can't be switched between vehicles. Now, this is something that is very difficult, uh, very different from um, most other rewards. And I think it will only apply to these because camos have remained for quite a long time as something that you can switch between tanks, which can be abused using mods, but it's, it you know, you earn the right, so. Three camouflage pieces will be added per nation. Once applied to the vehicle, they cannot be removed. So these these camos can't be changed either, which is also new. Um, six participation emblems and six emblems will be added per account. Now we'll, we'll have a look at those in a sec. Now the leaderboard rankings are there's no longer going to be gold so provinces will no longer produce gold and income um, and victory points instead clans will earn victory points through battles and clan quests if you're not familiar with clan quests for a lot of the higher up hierarchy of the clan they can see the progression of what they need to accomplish up the top and then if your teams are successful you get quite hefty rewards um, yeah, uh, the fortnightly leaderboard. Now, the way this can this season is going to work is there is going to be two fortnightly brackets. They both count towards the season, but you can be rewarded for each individual fortnight. So the first fortnight will be from the 9th till the 21st. Now, to confirm, the 21st is when the global map will freeze. That means that the battles will take place, the last battles of the first fortnight will take place on the 20th. They will end very early morning on the 21st. And then there will not be any battles at the end of the day on the 21st, which is what a lot of people get confused with. But if you wake up in the morning on the 21st and you think there's going to be clan wars, there won't be. Same thing sit with session two it'll start on the 30th there will be battles and it'll end on the 11th it'll go through until the 12th early in the morning and then the uh, map will freeze so same thing again you wake up really early in the morning to go to work or something on the 12th of may there won't be any battles that later that day that's that's a common misconception a lot of people get confused with here are all the um, rewards for each fortnight, not the season, the sessions. So for the first two weeks, you, your clans will be rewarded if you fit into these ranks here. And they're, they're, quite, they're quite rewarding to be honest. In fact, the gold reward, because they don't think there's going to be more than 30 clans participating, um, yeah, the lowest prize is 5,000 gold into the clans bank. Top prize, however, is 50,000 50, gold. 
that is quite a massive amount but it, it, it gets pretty lenient as you go down um, and this is for tier 10 so these are the tier 10 rewards also tier 10 rewards you will be getting bonds first place will be getting 60,000 and as it goes down it slowly drops off and about 31 to 50 you'll be getting a thousand bonds and that's for the that's for the clan I, I, someone may have to correct me on this but I'm pretty sure this is a clan bounty so your um, one of your officers in your clan will distribute these bonds according to who played games the most all that crap you know if, if someone played 20 games and someone played 19 well then the person who played 20 will get 0.5% uh, more than the person who played 19 you know stuff like that so this this is a claim reward it is not an individual reward of bonds industrial rewards uh, that just goes into the clan and you can upgrade your stronghold using all of these points the rewards are pretty generous I mean 500,000 that's that's enough to do quite a bit uh, for a top tier clan uh, 100,000 is also quite a lot and that's from 51 to 70 so that that is quite generous now if you're deciding to go into the tier 8 front you're gonna be a little bit more disappointed top place when it comes to gold you only get 6,000 and that's to do, be distributed amongst everyone in the clan who participated and it just gets worse from there and this time there are 60 so up to six from 31 to 60 is the last place you get 2750 industrial resources also actually top place actually gets quite a hefty amount 100,000 is nothing to laugh about and then it gets pretty good pretty good pretty good and then 40,000 yeah so tier 8 if you're after industrial resources is actually not a bad idea if you really need bonds if you're after gold you're kidding yourself you really are although having said that knowing what clans are competing uh, going for these top gold amounts is probably um, full in yourself as well so as you can see you don't get bonds at tier 8 at all um, so they're, they're session rewards by session I mean fortnightly there'll be two fortnightly two sessions so there will be an ultimate winning bracket and the winning bracket is down further I have to try and find it because it, it's quite important to finish off on all right then so when both two sessions have been completed the top clans will be added together everything that you did in both seasons will be added together they won't be separate anymore um, as they were up here like you could do well in the first two weeks and actually win this and then you could do bad in the next two weeks and you would still get this reward because you won the first but down here this is overall over the four weeks um, so you will get your uh, ba uh, badges in your account and obviously you'll be able to apply these to your names in game so that people can see how cool you are um, you won't get one if you finish above 70 50 percent though uh, medals sorry now the clan style camos um, there are only three types of new camos one of them is its own thing and the other two are for each uh, biome that you play in so the winter camouflage is this one up here which you may be thinking looks quite sad and lonely and boring but um, I've double checked it isn't actually in the game uh, there is another camo that looks similar to this one, but it is called the Winter Forest Camo, and it is nothing like this. It's very jagged. This is very blobby. So this is definitely a new camo, and this is the Winter Camo. And basically, if you compete in this tournament and you finish above 75% of all the clans, you will receive the Winter Camo Flash. Now, as for the other two camouflages, we have the Shattered Stone style, which is this one. Which 
basically looks exactly the same as the clan the universal clan camo except inverted so the white used to be here and the green used to be here so it's inverted and it's a little bit more bold um, and you, you'll see the three different here's the forest one so that would have been inverted as well for the universal you can even check this in garage if you've got a universal clan camo um, it, it, it's just a it's the same thing but the, the two colors have been changed they've changed spots um, which is they had to come up with something and they obviously decided this was the way to go now the other the other camo is the assault camo now the assault camo is the one everyone's going to be after wait first I need to clarify when you get the shattered stone Shattered Stone is, you need to finish above 50%. And this is for tier 10. So you finish above 50% of all clans, you'll get all three sh uh, Shattered Stone styles. One of each. And I'm not too sure if it's one for each nation, as it used to be for global, for campaigns. I think for Clan Wars, it's, uh, for Seasons, it's a little different. You only get three. Um, yeah, so for the Assault, the Assault version actually looks quite new. You can see it right here. It's it's very bland, it's very basic, but there are these scratch marks on it all over it. Even on the barrel, that's the winter one, and here's the summer one. You see the scratch marks. And the camo in the background comes with it same with this one you see it now you can definitely see the scratch marks and that's basically what the assault version looks like and yeah that'll be the top camo and to get the assault one you need to finish above 10 percent um the clam emblems well you will get you will get them regardless of what happens um and you will get this bomb this cannon here as well and I think you'll get six of them I think it said six at the top it said a certain amount somewhere anyway yeah you, you will get a couple of those to distribute you definitely get more than three so I think you'll get six yeah. and the projection decals the new ones that they've added into the game these ones here you will only receive these if you're above 50% in tier 10. For tier 8, it gets a little bit more unfortunate if you're looking for rewards. You will definitely get something if you finish above 50% in terms of medals. Um, and as, as for camo goes, you're, you're only going to get a winner camo. And you need to finish in the top 10%. And the window camera isn't that much to look at. It might be transparent, which can bring up some really cool stuff. Uh, the transparent cameras are definitely the way forward. But uh, yeah, and you'll get the um, Chinese New Year dragon. Uh, projections, you will get one. Or you will get six, or three, I think it's six, uh, if you're in the top ten. So if you're above top 10 in tier 8 clan wars, yeah, you're not getting very much. You're getting this right here, which is yay. Thanks for coming. Okay, so uh, victory point calculation very, very quickly, because this is quite complicated to explain. Um, you will get times one for challenging someone in a tournament on landing provinces. You will get a three times multiplier for battling contenders on regular or auction provinces. So that'll be the final or yeah, the final of a prop of a tournament or battling a province owner. Uh, the times ten is battling against the province owner of any type of any province. So no, I was, I was wrong on the times three. If you verse a province owner, it's times 10. 
if you fight the last person in the tournament, there's only two people left, or two people bid for a province and they both want it, no one owns it, so it's a times three. In order to get times ten, someone needs to own the province. And here are all the multipliers. If you're under a thousand, you get one times, which is unfortunate. I think it goes off experience or something like that. But for all the top clans, I think a lot of the top clans are around about here at the moment, which is weird, I, I must admit, but they, they've done a lot of changing and ranking around, so it, it'll help them a bit. Um, but there are a couple that are still up here and, and should be watched. You should plan accordingly when you burst them because they can, well, it's a waste of time. And also, if you if you see a top clan that you think you can beat, just remember these figures because that those these multipliers are quite huge when you really think about it. All right, so the general rules. Tier eight front is 10 v 10. Tier 10, 15 v 15. Number of provinces, tier six, uh, tier eight has only 60. That's not a lot. They don't want you to play tier eight. Tier 10, 200. So that's a massive amount. The prime time will be 1600 to 2300 UTC plus eight. So yeah, keep that in. Keep that in. Um, just copy that. Type that in Google, and you'll find out immediately what time it is. Uh, regular auction and land and provinces will be available on the global map. Um, this will also happen on the first night. So night one, everyone's just going to try and pick a spot. Uh, clan operations are on. Fog of war is on. Province progression is off. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what province progression means, but I'm pretty sure that that means you can't leave a province without having a division on it. So you need to put a flag down if flags are still a thing. But anyway, auctions are on. Um, auctions have changed, by the way. I'll talk about that in a sec. Pretense bids are off. Um, this is the other thing. Pretense bids. Um, I'm pretty sure you won't be able to bid until the last hour. Right when the bidding starts. Uh, vehicle lock is on. And I think that's global. Ransacks are off. Yeah, they should be. Revolts are on. Yeah, if you stay on uh, a certain... If you get attacked enough on a certain location, you win too much. Revolts become a big problem. Now, I don't understand this bit. Shifting battle time start for influencers off in 50% of province battle start time is shifted by 15 minutes, depending on their prime times. Now, I don't understand that bit, so I'm going to have to explain that. Province owner participates only in the final battle with the winner of the challenges tournament on their own province, applicable to landing provinces, auctions, provinces, and attacks from adjacent territories. Right, so. That probably doesn't mean what I think it means, but it, say you own Ent and your territory has all these other different maps and you get attacked on, say, Prekhorovka, you can defend with Ent? I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but that, that sounds like what that means. Oh, applicable to the landing province. Oh, yeah, yeah alright, no, I'm wrong. Number of landing tournaments, applicants is 32, which will be changed on the first night, it always is. 32 is a good number, but for the first night it's definitely not. There'll be 64, easy. Um, so get in fast, make sure your clan leader knows that on the 9th and on the 30th, I think it was. Yeah, on the 9th and 30th, as soon as he wakes up in the morning, just start putting down those chips. Because 32 is, it's never been enough. Wargaming know that, but they also know that eventually it pans out to be enough. It's just that first day where it's a massive problem. Alright, maximum number of active landing applications that can be, be submitted by one clan. Tier 8 is 10. Tier 10 is 6. 
provided that the clan has at least 60 members with tier 10 vehicles. So this is a massive nerf. Um, back in campaigns, I think it was 10, just flat out. But for tier, tier 10, it's 6. That's... Man, yeah, you're going to be chipping every two hours or so. Quite heftily, too. And you need 90 members. Otherwise, it'll probably deduct mathematically, determining on how many you have. Clans that already own a province cannot apply for a landing tournament on the global map. This is a massive change. Well, not a massive change. This is big. Um, so if you land, you cannot apply for a tournament. Um, you can expand outwards, but you must stay where you are. Unless you decide to take your flag off the map and reset, which can take some time. Clans can attack landing provinces by land. Um, yep, the Benton modules are on. They're like the artillery, all that stuff. You may have seen a couple of them feature in um, front lines. Vision upkeep is free. Uh, dynamic division cost is on. Straightforward shit. So the influence um, per battle. I think these will be clan only. It's, it's not for. Um... Oh no, this is dynamic division cost is on, and then it has this listed. So your first division, your your first division will cost 200 and 300 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so your 10th division will cost 7500 so so if you have 10 provinces you're you're going to be spending a lot and for tier 8 it's the same thing you're going to be spending a lot and you're not going to be earning a lot of it. so they're they're about the same so just remember that maybe keep three or four provinces if you're a, a medium clan penalties are on you know, keep an eye on that uh, on the first day of the game event all provinces of the global map will be landing provinces pretty obvious um, yeah so there wasn't really much to talk about here's the map pool so you got Karelia, Malinovka, Himmelsdorf, Prakarovka, Angst Lakeville, Ruinberg, Mines, Miravanka, Siegbreak Mine, Cliff, Abbey, Westfield, Sand River, Fjords, Redshire, Steps, Fisherman's Bay, Serene's Coast, and Overlord, unfortunately. And that is pretty much it. As for the rules, they are listed here. I will link them below. Um, these are very technical, they've been worked up over a number of years and there's still some more working out to be done. The best thing to do is to just give it a once over and if you notice anyone above you doing the wrong thing, just, I don't think, you know, put your hand up because uh, sometimes it can be more than just the person who made the mistake that gets punished which has happened in the past to massive, massive repercussions across an entire clan. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all that in a nutshell. I'm sorry this video went for a long time. There was a lot to cover. Um, so yeah, it'll be starting on the 9th and um, good luck to everyone on the battlefield and uh, hope to see some new clans out there reaping, reaping the rewards and um, yeah, I'll see you on the battlefield.